Welcome back to Huchos. Today on Huchos, I'm gonna show you how to build this. This is an aesthetically pleasing terracotta pot Italian style herb garden. It is auto refilling from a float valve in the rain gutter grow system that runs beneath the pots. It is wicking and auto watering using capillary action to draw the water and nutrient up into the grow media or soil that you have within the pots. And the terracotta pots themselves cool the root zone through evaporative cooling, allowing this system to be used in some of the hottest continents on earth. Let's get to building it. So here on Huchos, I understand that not everyone is as lucky as me and is able to do whatever they like in whatever space they would like. Some of us have partners to answer to and can't just go filling up every space in your life with hydroponic systems like I do. Now to you and I, this is a thing of beauty, exponential potential for the production of food. But to some of our partners, it looks like an industrialized pipe jungle. And that's okay, they're allowed to be wrong. But for some of us, that's not enough. We still must have our hydroponic systems. So today I'm trying to create a hydroponic system that is both aesthetically pleasing, easy to put together, and extremely productive. Now to meet this criteria, we're going to be using the rain gutter grow system underneath some store-bought pots. So let's get started. I've set up my rain gutter grow systems the same way that I always set up my rain gutter grow systems. You can do this either with the 3D printable end caps, which I've updated recently so that the ends has a 13 millimeter garden hose and seal once you slide in your tap fitting. I've updated all of the print files for the Australian pipe sizes as well as the American pipe sizes. And all we do is we silicon both the tap end and the float valve end onto our pipe after of course cutting out a recess so that our float can fit within the float end of our system. It's a really quick process and it's quite simple. You will need a hole saw for this job, but that is pretty much the only tool you'll need for the entire setup of this system. I have a new 3D print for you, which we'll be using to adapt our pots into our rain gutter grow systems. However, you do not require this 3D print to set up this system. It is an optional alternative. It will just allow us to add and remove pots as we please in the future. And this will be entirely possible without the 3D print. It's just, it makes it a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner, but it is completely optional. Just like this style of rain gutter grow system is completely optional, you can utilize the existing fittings at hardware stores to come up with the ends for this system. It's just a little bit more expensive than the 3D printable parts if you have a 3D printer. And I'll take this opportunity to give a shout out to the World Grace Project who I've worked with before. It is a charity organization and they supply the two x three and three x four gutter end caps for the American vinyl piping. So let's get to setting up the system. Now this system is ideally designed to be laid over concrete and that will allow us to have a level piece of ground where we can place our pipe down and our pots down over the top of the pipe. But for myself, I'll just be utilizing this flat piece of ground that is next to my dragon fruit hydroponic system. So I'm gonna get rid of all the leaf litter, make sure it's nice and level and give my rain gutter grow system a level base to work with. Okay, so to keep the system looking as if it was an Italian potted garden, instead of our plank method of keeping the pots above the system, we're going to be using pot feet. These are actually quite expensive. Um, it's about $15 for three. So each pot is going to have an extra $15 cost added to it. But if we're going for that aesthetic, we are going to need to use these. And you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that you grab the feet that are the height of the gutter that you're using at minimum. So these are 50 mil feet. 
and the gutter that I'm using is 50 mil. So I'm hoping that these keep the pots above the system just enough to make them either hover or sit perfectly on top of my pipe. So I'll just lay these out. You'll have one on one side and two on the other, like so, and we can add our pot. Like so. Now there is actually a reason that we are going to be using terracotta pots and I'll outline that in a little bit. Now the way that we are going to make these pots work within a rain gutter grow system is by utilizing the holes on the base of the terracotta pots. Now from what I could tell with the terracotta pots available to me at my local store was that the hole sizes are all fairly large for the larger pots. So what I've done is I've tailored my 3D print to fit within most terracotta pots. In fact, most pot planters in general. And this is it. This is the 3D print that I've designed. It is a spike that sticks above the rain gutter grow system, much in the same way as the wick wedge system does. And it houses two wicks, which overlap each other at the top and run down into our rain gutter grow system through a 29 millimeter hole saw hole. This will then protrude up from our rain gutter grow system and into the base of any pot with a hole in it and allow our pots to wick from the rain gutter grow system below. I've designed this 3D print to be a multi-purpose 3D print. Not only will it stick up into pots with holes in them, but it will also pierce through bagged media. So this is the evolution of the wick wedge. And I'd say going forward, I will be using this for larger bagged media and the rock wedge for smaller bagged media. The reason being that this pierces a smaller hole within the bags, which allows you to remove the bags without the media falling out. And it gives you the same amount of wicking area with less disturbance to the bag and the media. It also allows you to place the pot down over the system and remove it without losing any media or damaging the root structure of the plant itself, whilst allowing you to place the pot down after you've removed it, which wasn't an option with the rain gutter grow system utilizing net cups. So I'm now going to lay out my pots and identify where I'm going to drill the holes for my grow spikes, then we can drill out the system, connect it to our reservoir and have a look at how the system works. Because I've got five pots for the system, I'm gonna be measuring out and equally distributing five holes across the length of my gutter. So I'm gonna measure that, mark that, and then I can lay out the pots, make sure that it looks good and then drill it out once I'm happy. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have six. <laughs> And to make sure it's nice and aesthetic, I've just laid out the, an alternating pattern of feet so that it's two on one side, one on one side, and the same going down the other side. And then we can lay our pots over the top. And for the pots, I'm gonna be alternating large deep pots with shallow wide pots. And this is just going to allow me to fill the area in a nice compact way. It's also gonna allow me to grow multiple plant species um, within this system. So I'll probably have tomatoes or capsicums in the large containers and herbs in the smaller ones. There we go. And as you can see, I've got all the pots resting over their respective position on the system. And once we're happy with the pot placement, we can remove them and drill our holes. This wick is designed with a 29 millimeter hole saw in mind, which is a one and one eighth hole saw in America, or if I'm pronouncing it wrong, whatever that measurement means. If you're just using wicks dropping out of the bottom of these pots without a 3D print, absolutely fine. Just make the hole whatever size makes it easiest for you to feed that wick through your system, I dare say it's probably this size anyway. You can just lean the pot forward, push the wick in with your fingers, 
and then you're on your way. Now I'm going to drill out the holes for my wicks. As usual, start in forwards until the middle drill bit centers and then reverse for a nice clean cut. <laughs> And our wick should just fit into our hole like so. And over the top of that wick, our pot will be placed with the grow media in it. And it will pierce through the grow media and supply the pot with water and nutrient evenly because it will disperse outward from the wick. It provides a nice even distribution of water and nutrient throughout the grow media, which will also wick. Now, if you were to do this without the wicks, you could easily just place your wick within your pot before you place your grow media. Have it secured to the base of the pot with maybe a little bit of masking tape so that it goes out to the side and then have it dangling from the bottom of the pot, which you could then have dangled below the pot and feed into your rain gutter system as you place the pot down. It's not as easy to place, but it will do the job if you don't have a 3D printer. Okay, so for the mix that we're going to use today, it's just going to be a 60-40 cocoa perlite potting mixture. You can tailor this however you like. You can add in peat. You can change the ratio of cocoa to perlite. 70-30 is a very common ratio of cocoa to perlite, but the perlite is cheaper, so I like to bump it up to 40 and still gives us plenty of cocoa to play with. In some of my other hydroponic systems, I also mix in scoria to give it weight so that if the systems dry out, the plants don't topple over. The scoria also tends to give them a little bit more structure for the heavier plants like citrus trees and stuff that I have in those systems. The cocoa that I'm using is the cocoa that I amended in my most recent video and it is amended for hydroponics using calcium nitrate. Now, if you don't have access to something like this premium hydroponic grade of cocoa, you will need to amend the cocoa uh, that you can get in bricks or from nursery supply stores that hasn't been hydroponically amended. You'll need to amend that with calcium nitrate or you can amend it with CalMag. So just make sure you're working with a hydroponic grade of cocoa and you'll have a good time. So I'm just going to mix this up and then we can add it into our pots. and we can just fill up our pots by pouring it directly into them. Now, of course you can do this in a wheelbarrow, but I'm gonna be doing this a lot in the future. So I invested in a cement mixer. And that's just a nice easy way to evenly mix and fill our pot so that we have a nice consistent mix to work with in our new hydroponic system. And now I'm gonna fill up the rest of my pots. My pots are all full of my 60-40 cocoa perlite mix. Now it's time to connect up the system to my reservoir, which will be supplying gravity-fed hydroponic nutrient. Over here, I've got a 1,000 litre IBC pod, which holds 1,000 litres of water, and that's made up into 2.4 EC, 5.5 to 6.5 pH hydroponic nutrient. Now, obviously you don't need a reservoir this size for a single system like this. You can just have this set up with a smaller drum full of nutrient that tops up as you go. Now, if you were to use another style of growing media, say you wanted to use this in a soil garden, which is absolutely possible, you can just have your potting mix, maybe amended with some peat moss or some cocoa cure, just to enhance the wicking capabilities of your potting mix. Have a really nice, rich potting mix, and you can just have this system watering your Italian style terracotta garden from below. And this can just be attached to 
a garden hose tap, which will then allow you to refill from mains water pressure. All right, so I'm going to get a float valve and we're going to attach our hose to our system and also to our reservoir. So we're just going to attach in our float valve. Just try and set it to where you think you want it to start with. So allowing it to just fall onto the base of the rain gutter so that it will allow some water in. And when it fills, it will only bob up a little bit before it stops the pressure behind the float valve. So we're going to slide it into our 3D print enclosure or the hole that you've drilled in the end cap that suits the style of pipe that you've got. Do up our nut on the back of the float valve, securing it in place. We're going to add in some plumber's tape so that we don't get any leaks. And then we're going to add on a BSP to 13 millimeter barb. And for that, we can add garden hose running to our reservoir. And we can connect it up, turn the reservoir on and let it refill, making sure that it's nice and level. And as you can see, our float valve is filling the system nicely. So we'll just leave that and make sure that it's nice and level all along the system. Okay, so it's the next day. We've got a nice water level across the system and I'm happy with how the whole system's come together so far. I'm now gonna show you how we wick up our grow spikes and then we can place them out in our system and place our pots over them. Okay, so I just wanna quickly talk about the print settings for this print for those printing it. It can be printed without supports and no build plate adhesion as long as you have decent adhesion to your build plate. I've designed this print to be printed in a point eight millimeter nozzle. However, you can print it in a 0.4 millimeter nozzle if that's what you're running at the moment. You do not need any infill with this print. The perimeters take up pretty much the entire print. It is a really compact design and does not require a lot of filament at all. And because of the footprint of the print, you can print up to 25 on a bed with one kilogram of filament. It allows you to batch print these with an efficacy that I haven't been able to achieve with the larger based wedge systems. So a really simple and highly efficient print that is one of the strongest physical structures that I've designed so far. So this is our unwicked grow spike. It has two sections where the wick can be inserted and run over the spike in two separate grooves. One is overlapping the other and this allows us to add in a six millimeter wicking rope wicking material and i'll add a link in the description to where i got this and all we do with this wicking material is we place it in the groove and then we use some kind of object to push it through the overlap in the print and this is to keep it from falling into our rain gutter grow system and we can just pull it down, we just push that through the top hole, if it's the one that's passing under, and we can feed it through the other side like so. We can then just do the same with the overlapping side. And that is our grow spike loaded and ready to go. We can then place that in our system, like so, and this is ready to receive a pot now. So this is a smaller pot um, it's actually the pot that I used for my ancient irrigation hydroponic device video where I showed you how we could use an oya within a small pot surrounded by perlite and vermiculite to start seeds or even to grow a small herb garden. And we saw a time lapse of that device. So if you want to check out that video, just click the link at the top right of the video. Now I'll be making... Hello. Hi, good to see you too. Now I'll be making multiple different versions of this grow spike at different lengths so that you can use it within smaller and larger pots as well. All of these will be on my Patreon so you can download it at your leisure. This is essentially how the system works. You place the pot directly over the top of the grow spike. It will actually hold the grow spike rigidly upright in place because of this collar around the grow spike. It is forced down into the hole, which holds it upright, and the pot coming down holds this grow spike rigidly in place. 
so it doesn't wobble around. What happens from here is that the water and the nutrient in the channel below wick up through the wicks and into the grow media, which is forced against as the spike penetrates into the base of the pot. This allows the nutrient and water through capillary action to be distributed into the grow media evenly because it's a round pot. So the moisture will be evenly distributed, radiating out from the grow wick. And this will give us a really consistent way of delivering nutrient and water into a pot above the rain gutter grow system. Okay, so I'm now going to place my grow spikes out along the system and we can place our pots over the top and allow the grow spikes to do their work. Before I do this, however, I am going to do a quick wet down of the media with the full strength hydroponic nutrient that I'll be using for this system. This will just allow the wicking action to begin because even though it will start and make its way up through dry media, it's better if we have moisture in the media to start with because as the moisture evaporates and transpires through the plants, it is dragged up by the movement of water rather than having to slowly wick into the media. So I actually just had to fill up my nutrient reservoir so that I could fill up my watering can. So I'll just give you a look at what that looks like. It's a 1000 litre IBC that I've cut a square out of the top so that I can dunk my watering can down into it. And it has an adapter going from the IBC exit with a tap out to a tap splitter just a standard garden hose tap splitter, which I can then connect up all of my gravity feed hydroponic systems to. Now, there is a video on how to make this, which includes how to clad, how to add in a refill float valve, and also things like uh, the measurements on the side that you'll want to add in before you clad. Things that you wouldn't think of the first time around when building one of these. So I'll just quickly show you the pH and the EC. So the EC is 2.43, which is perfect for flowering and fruiting plants. And the pH is 5.8. So I want to get between 5.5 and 6.5. 5.8 is ideal. It's within that range. And the nutrient I use is a Campbell's Diamond Spec T and a mixing rate of one gram of the nitrocal and one gram of the other elements, the Diamond Spec T, per liter of water. So for this reservoir, I put a kilogram of both the Nitro Cal and a kilogram of the Diamond Spec T. For my water, it's rainwater, and I have to adjust it up one factor of pH. So I add in 100 mils of my adjustment, but it will be different for each person because your water will be different and the pH adjuster you use will be different. So just go off the recommended rate of adjustment and pre-adjust it based on your water. Okay, so I'm now going to wet down all of my grow media. I'm gonna keep it off the ground so that I don't get dirt on the bottom of my pots. Fill up my watering can full of nutrient and then just give it a nice soak down until I see some runoff out the bottom hole. As you can see with these shorter ones, I've actually had a print fail towards the end of the print and I'm actually going to use them for the shorter pots until such time as I've got more printed off because I only had the prototype at the start of this video and it's been two days of both printing and redesigning this wick spike to be stronger and I've had some rather catastrophic print failures due to a lack of adhesion on some of the surfaces. So I'm going to place this down over our grow spike and that should start wicking into the bottom of our pot pretty much immediately. How good. <laughs> so I'm going to wet down the rest of the pots and place them over. So the benefit of terracotta pots comes in their porosity. The pot itself allows water to escape through the outside of the pot, through the pores within the pot. This allows for evaporative cooling on the outside of the pot, which in turn cools the grow media and the roots as the water evaporates. 
This is good because plastic pots, similar to the ones that I've got throughout my garden, can heat up, and this is detrimental to the roots in the container. Now, whether or not this is going to concentrate the nutrient within the pots, I am not sure because I've never come across terracotta pots used in a hydroponic scenario. So that is something we'll keep an eye on throughout the progression of this system. And as you can see, with this pot that I've used for my ancient irrigation hydroponic device, I've actually got algae growing on the outside external part of the pot where the nutrient has come through and this algae has bloomed because it's got sunlight and nutrient and structure to grow on, which is really interesting. And I predict that we'll have the same thing happen within this system. Now, I don't think that will be detrimental at all. However, that's my prediction and I'm very interested to see how this all turns out. And to the end, we can add in our guard, which just protects the nutrient and the float from both light and accidental depression by whatever could fall onto the float, like so. And as you can see, because we've got excess nutrient in the pots, it's leaking through and it's actually filling up the base res to overflow. This is fine. It will overflow until such time as the nutrients leveled out and then once we have plants in the system, they'll start utilizing the nutrient, causing the float valve to drop, and then the system will be turning over nicely. Okay, so for the smaller pots, I'll be throwing in some herbs. So I've got some rosemary here. This has been in my NFT and it's doing really well. And what I'm hoping to achieve is that I'll lie this along the media and it should shoot down roots along this stem. So I'm gonna put that in my back pot, I'll bury all the roots and I'll place it in like that. And this here is my ground-based NFT, which I'm actually planning on getting rid of. I'm going to try and empty as much as this out as possible. As you can see here, I've got a line of micro tomatoes. So I'm gonna be doing two large pots of micro tomatoes and I'll have three in each large pot. And I'm gonna put the basil into one of our herb containers and I'll have another pot of capsicums. So let's get these guys out of the system. Basils just have such a phenomenal amount of roots. Have a look at that. And you can see where it was sitting upright in the NFT and it's fallen over and then started to root out along the NFT as well. And this is an example of the micro tomatoes, which are doing phenomenally. And you can see there how the NFT is doing its job and here again as well. So we're gonna pop these into our system. All right, so the basil can go up the front here. Just fill around. And we can add in our micro tomatoes. Now these tomatoes are doing phenomenally in that NFT. And I love the size, especially in that ground-based NFT. I think I might be doing more NFT micro tomatoes because these are gonna provide a bounty of tiny tomatoes and they stand upright in that NFT, especially when they've rooted like this. So I'm really happy with um, these guys in that system, even though I'm moving them now to this system. But you know, <laughs> if it's not broke, fix it, <laughs> right? And we're just gonna fill around these guys. Very good. I mean, just have a look at the length of the roots on those microtoms. They've been loving that NFT. I think for the middle one, we're gonna go with some capsicums. So I'm just gonna poke these in and we'll see how they travel. And there it is, an automatically refilling terracotta pot Italian style herb garden, which can be either hydroponic or soil based that refills automatically from below using either Wix or the 3D printable spike that I've designed for you to print at home so you can feed your family. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking, happy gardening, and I'll see you next time.
on who chose? Oh, there is going to be some pasta in my future. 